Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today we're at the wheel of something very new indeed and very, very plush and comfortable. Yes, this is an F12 series BMW 640D Grand Coupe. The ultimate in luxury if you're looking to anything from the Bavarian brand. Now this car will be for sale on Bidding Classics very soon indeed, so check out the website if you're interested in having a look at it yourself. So, quick word from our sponsors, and now on with the review. So yes, this is the BMW 640D Grand Coupe, BMW's answer to the Audi A7 and the Mercedes CLS. It was a long time coming, and it's become something of a halo car to the range of BMW internal combustion engine vehicles, because it is a stunning looking car, isn't it? It is a pillarless four-door swooping curving coupe is a bit of everything all in one now, although it shares a lot of underpinnings with the 5 series and could be argued it's less practical than the 5 series it does sit above the 5 in the range because this thing is just pure personal luxury this was the buzzword of the american car industry for a long time personal luxury a big car that was very nice and focused on the front seat occupants and this does bring all of that back and we'll take a look around in a second and explain why but first of all, let's take a look from front to back. And this thing is a stunning looking vehicle. The prominent kidney grille is at this point in BMW's design history, still quite a restrained and elegant and attractive looking thing. The headlamps are interesting little jewels at the front of the car as well. And the whole thing is very sleek and very refined. It's restrained design with enough flair to make it actually very interesting and quite menacing and sinister. We have these sweeping flanks, the big sills, everything you want in this kind of car. And lots of little details as well, the chrome highlights on the door handles, the low roof line, the big B post, which almost, almost makes you forget there's two doors back here as well. But two doors there are with the pillarless glass and the Grand Coupe name tucked here on the C post, hidden by the window itself, which is an interesting touch. And you come around the back of the car and you have a little bit of a vestigial bangle butt going on. If you remember the original Chris Bangle 7 series, which took a lot of derision and hate at the time, this has a little element of that, that curve, that shape around the lights, and the lights themselves, again, elegant. BMWs of today seem to have gone a little bit squiffy. This, though, is prior to that generation and has a very elegant look indeed. Let's take a look inside this thing because that is where it really is very special. Now, as I say, pillarless doors, so you give the door handle a pull, the glass drops, and in you get. And this is where you notice the difference between a 6 Series and a 5 Series, and the Grand Coupe is very, very, very luxurious indeed. Everything has got leather, it's soft touch leather as well, with contrast stitching, leather armrest, aluminium inserts are the only non-leather parts, and the Harman Kardon stereo as well. You climb inside, you've got the memory seats, it's rather lovely fluted almost art deco styling going on in this seat back pattern this is the the premium leather from bmw climb aboard and we have got the digital dashboard and the large screen here in the center but that's not the headline story the headline story is the fact you've got the leather dash top the aluminium in the center the leather continues with the, again the contrast stitching all across the center console onto the big armrests in the middle as well. It's just leather everywhere and the whole thing looks and feels and even smells just delightful. So we have got a big leather tea shelf, although I would be reticent to put a cup of tea on top of that because it's lovely leather again. Big wide screen with all the usual infotainment and stuff on there. And then as I say, the digital dashboard. So digital speedometer up to 160 miles an hour, digital rev counter, digital temperature and fuel. And moving back, as well as our very large indicator and light switches we've got flappy paddles so we can take control of the car to a certain extent over the uh, automatic gearbox down here moving back to the steering wheel itself it is a lovely smooth soft leather and just about the right amount of of thickness to get a, a comfortable grip so you can take this car on a long long journey across an entire continent and still feel relaxed without achy hands that are starting to hurt of course we've got our steering wheel controls and things for bits and pieces on here as well mode cruise control telephone that kind of thing and the horn let's see the horn 
Oh, that's an autobahn bashing blast of a parp. Out of my way, I'm faster than you and more comfortable than you. And down to the right of the wheel, we do of course have our lighting controls. Ding ding, side lights on. And front and rear fogs, headlights, panel dipping, all down there. And finally down in the footwell, releases for the boot and the bonnet. Moving into the centre of the car, we have the big iDrive screen, controlled of course from the iDrive panel down here, which you can scroll on top of, you can push up and down, you can rotate, and you've got the buttons surrounding it as well. All happens up here, connected drive, navigation, communication, everything is all up here on the top screen. Moving down into the machine turned aluminium effect, we've got our big air ventilation at the top, big, big vents, engine start stop hidden behind the wheel just there. Then moving down past a little strip of satin metal, we've got our radio and a CD player. I'm relatively late at it. We've got our radio and our CD player. Still got a CD slot in there so you can still play physical media in this car should you want to. And also in this large piano black area, and this is something I don't like about piano black, it picks up dust just so easily. Um, we've got a matching heating and ventilation panel which follows the line and the style of the radio buttons above. Dual zone climate, heated seats, all the general controls like that. Now looking underneath that, we've got a vast area of this turned aluminium material. In the middle of it, a big double cup holder with a USB tucked in there so you can charge stuff. Interesting cars have gone from a cigarette lighter to a USB at this point, this is about 2016. Then of course we've got the uh, BMW shifter, standard on so many things, and the mode selection, so from comfort to sport, depending on how your mood takes you. Moving back in this delightful fine leather, got a big ashtray area here, and there is a cigarette lighter in there as well. And with big storage area in the armrest, which is of course all soft leather as well. The roof line, as I say, is fairly low because it is a coupe, and you are just brushing your head if you lean out sideways, but for the most part, it doesn't really feel at all constricting or claustrophobic. It's just a nice place to be. The light colors of the seats make a big difference in here. Now, climbing into the back, it is a very similar story. Well, it's interesting how the rear glass is actually in two pieces. We have a quarter light. This, and this, of course, as I say, does give you a lovely view of that Grand Coupe logo through the tinted glass. Now, this roof line does sweep down very steeply indeed, so climbing in the back is a little... In fact, it's very tight getting in the back if you're a grown-up, but once you're in here, the way that the roof swoops around you and then rises up does mean you do have a reasonably okay amount of headroom and certainly a decent amount of knee room as well. It is strictly a two-seater. There's no third seat option and the centre console runs all the way to the back, blocking that chance completely. You do have air vents in there, You've got a little cubby hole. No power supplies, I'm surprised to see. But the seats are very comfortable and there is storage and cup holders here in the armrest. And a ski hatch through to the boot. One rather nice little touch here in the back is the uh, courtesy lights, which are completely mobile. They move back and forth in one axis and left and right in another. So you can have like airline style lighting for your reading lights and what have you here in the back. And known collectively as the F12 series, the 6 series came as a convertible, a two-door coupe, or this, the F06 four-door Grand Coupe, and it ran from 2011 to 2018. It was designed in-house by Nader Fahishaza, an Iranian who also did the 7 series, and they're assembled in Dingelfing in Germany. The platform and many parts are shared with the F10 5 and F017 series. The F12 and 13 Coupe and Cabrio have a shorter wheelbase than the 5, but this 4-door F06 is the same as the 5 series. Now, usefully, looking straight ahead of me, I have got a heads-up display which you probably can't see on screen because cameras don't really pick them up because they focus about the point of the front bumper. But it's very handy indeed. I'm like running through a 30 mile an hour speed limit right now. I can look ahead and I can see we're doing 28 miles an hour. Very useful. And even at mid-range speeds, it picks up instantly from 40 to 60, just like that. The 640 is a rear-wheel drive with either a 3.0-litre straight-six N55 petrol or N57 diesel, or in the M6, a 4.4-litre V8. The six pots come with an 8-speed ZF Auto, while the M6 is a Jetrag 7-speed dual-clutch auto, but lucky customers in the US could spec their M6 or 650i with a 6-speed manual. Now the car does have a variety of modes, notably 
comfort and more notably sport. So click the sport button, there's even a sport plus and hopefully this MX-5 will move out of the way and then we can put the foot down with the national limit and see what we can do. See what I mean. Wow! That does get quite exciting quite quickly. <laughs> You know you're in sport mode because the dials have gone bright red. Yeah, sport Plus, it stays red. And this is, this is the right day for Sport Plus because the traction control is also off, shown here in the dashboard. But we'll turn it back on again for now because rear wheel drive car, lots of power. Let's not get silly. <laughs> in terms of performance, the 640i will do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, while the diesel is only 0.1 of a second behind at 5.4. The M6 is just showing off at 4 seconds though. If you're in a mood for a more of a comfortable ride, drop it back into comfort and things just soften up a little bit. The gear shifts are less harsh, the steering's less weighted, and it's just a very comfortable place to be, but honestly, sport is the fun one. It does feel like a big car on the road, because it is a big car. It's basically a 5 Series platform, but nearly 5 metres long and lower to the ground. You do feel like you're looking through a little bit of a slot of a windscreen, but it gives it more of a sporty edge of a feeling than otherwise if it was a full, full height tall screen. It does have incredible pickup and the automatic gearbox is remarkably smooth as well, so it's a very, very nice car to be in. Very good way of making progress very rapidly indeed. Steering is nicely weighted and overall the ride is on the firm side but still very comfortable and the seats are quite firm but comfortable as well. They hold you just nicely in this beautiful buckety shape. Now there are a variety of range levels in this particular car. This one is an M Sport. And the 640D is considered by a lot of people to be the one to go for because it offers similar power to the 640i petrol but far better economy. And the M Sport suspension package and trim just makes it look and handle that bit better. And it does just flow through corners deliciously. This 6 replaced the E63 version which ran from 2003 to 2010 and was actually an early review here on the channel but it wasn't directly replaced as the G32 6 series is more like a 5 series liftback. So the G15 8 series is closer in spirit, which is sort of fitting as these generations of 6 sort of replaced the old 8 series from the 90s. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this ride out in this very nice indeed F06 Grand Coupe. If you've enjoyed, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join us again next time driving something completely different.